Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Vertus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be showing you how you can get a basic little icon onto your scene for your action bar and give it a, you know, sort of progress bar for a cooldown effect. Now this cooldown effect is simply going to go from the bottom to the top and the player won't be able to use that ability until the cooldown has run out. Now we're not going to have any actual icon images at the moment, instead it's just going to be sort of like a fade going from uh, blue to white um, for like a little progress bar. Um, if we dive straight into it I'll show you exactly what we're talking about. So first things first, what you want to do is go over to your RPG HUD widget which contains all of your user interface information that we created earlier on in the series. And if you remember we made this little action bar here and we've got the 10 little buttons. Now we are going to set up a cooldown for the first ability for now and that's going to be our heal ability. Now the way we're going to do this is simply use a progress bar. So just drag one from the palette over here on the left hand side, put it into your scene and then you're just pretty much just going to scale it and drop it into place just like this. Now bear in mind we're going to be st scaling this and styling it a bit more in detail later on in the series once that we have got an icon for it. It's really simple to do. All we're going to be doing later on is just setting a background image and a fill image to do that. But for now we are simply just going to use this fill color and opacity to make it go uh, just like this. Now set your bar fill type to go from bottom to top instead, that way it looks like it's filling up um, like a normal cooldown effect would do and then if you just move the progress percentage over here you can see that it fills up and that's pretty much the exact effect that I'm looking to get. So with this in here now what we're going to do then is we've actually got to create a variable for this so that we can actually link the progress bar to a variable and then as that variable increases it's then going to move the bar with it. So what we're going to do is quickly compile and save this just to make sure we don't lose any progress and then inside of my third person character the same place we're actually handling this heal ability I'm going to go over to my bottom left and I'm going to create a new variable. Just give this the name um, ability1 cooldown for now. So ability1 cooldown and then for the variable type in the top right over here make sure you set this to float. Now you could use an integer but the reason why I'm using a float for this is simply because um, it just lets us be a little bit more precise but most importantly all of our UI stuff is automatically going to work with float variables anyway so we don't have to convert the variable type sort of in the code so it just makes things a little bit easier. So for the default value for this it's simply going to be 1. Now the way that we're going to be doing this system is at the start of the ability we are pretty much going to check to see if the value is equal to 1 and then if it is it's just going to run straight away and by having it set to 1 you know straight away by default you don't have to wait before you can use the ability when you first start up the game which is great. So once you have used the ability we're going to be essentially just setting this variable down to 0 and then every say half a second we're going to just increment that up and just boost it up to one basically. So what we're going to do then, so to start things off I'm going to find my heal ability. Now for me that was a bit ability one and if you guys are having trouble keeping track of some of your stuff here inside of your blueprints what you might want to do is just quickly select all of your stuff for your ability one press C to comment it and then with the name over here make sure you just set this to heal so you can find it a bit easier uh, later on in the series. Now what I'm going to do directly after ability 1 has been pressed before this branch here is I'm going to create another branch and this branch is just going to quickly check to see whether or not the ability 1 cooldown is essentially greater than or equal to 1 which is just pretty much checking to see if the character can use it you know the cooldown has run out basically. So what I'm going to do is type in float and the one you're looking for here is greater than or equal to. And then if you get a reference to ability 1 cooldown, hook this up to the first value for A and then B should simply be 1. And now what this is going to do is return true if A is greater than B, B being 1 and then A being our ability cooldown. So if it is true and it is ready, it's going to proceed to run and do all the rest of the code for our healing. If it isn't and it's not ready, it's simply going to do nothing. Now bear in mind we're going to have a little UI pop up later on in the series to say that you know cooldown not ready, maybe play a sound and stuff. So it might be worth just making sure you know exactly where this is. But for now we're just going to leave this completely blank. Now for the bit that's actually going to pretty much change this ability stuff. So 
At the end of all of this, what we're going to tell it to do is first thing first is set the heal or set ability 1 cooldown and we're going to set this to 0 so it's pretty much going to drop it straight away. And that's essentially just going to stop the player being able to use that ability. So what I'm going to do quickly is compile this and just test it. So I'm going to press play real quick and then I'm going to press 1 and then it should go down but it's not going to do that at the moment because I haven't actually bound my uh, progress bar to this variable that we've created. So I'm going to do that real quick. Open up your HUD widget, go to your progress bar over here and then where you've got the binding for the percentage just create a binding real quick and then because it's the character we're trying to interact with just type in cast to third person character and then as third person character, simply get a reference to ability one cooldown. And then just hook it up to the return value here in the return node. And because it's a float, there's no conversion and nothing else that we need to do. For the object wildcard, simply type in get player character. So it sort of knows how to communicate with that. Once you've done that, compile this. And then if we go ahead and press play now, you can see by default it's 100% filled, that's all good. And if I press 1, it's going to play my ability, and then after the ability has been done, it's going to set it down to 0, but at the moment it's not going to keep filling up and we cannot use it again. So I mean that's sort of the meats and the bones of our cooldown ability set up. So what we're going to do now then, is pretty much make it do a sort of like a loop, um, just filling this up. So. Let's do that. So go back into your third person character, go to the end of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to run a branch, an if statement, to check to see if the ability is less than 1. And if it is less than 1, we're simply going to tell it to add some, you know, just add a little bit of value to it to make it go up and then add a little delay into it. Now, I tried doing this with a do while loop, which is probably going to be the better way of doing things, but it just doesn't work with delays too well. So this is sort of just like the dirty way of doing it. But it will work, so that's not going to be much of an issue. So, with this branch here, if we drag this out and what we're typing in is checking to see whether or not it's going to be less than uh, less than 1. So set the bottom value, value for B to 1, and then the top value, get a reference to your ability cooldown. Now whatever you do, do not hook it up to this, because that's always going to set it to 0, and that's not going to work. What we want to do instead is get a whole new reference to it and hook it up to A. So what it's going to do now then is essentially if A being the ability cooldown is less than 1, it's going to pretty much tell it to do whatever's in true. And for that is simply going to be set ability 1 cooldown and we are simply just going to be adding on a float to that. So type in float plus float and then for A we are simply going to get the original value and then we are going to simply do 0.1 so it's going to take 10 increments to actually get it up to the full amount now you guys could play around with some of these values to make it a bit smoother so if you wanted to you could even set this to something like 0.5 and it'll have to do 20 increments and it's going to go up in tiny 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 little bits now for the most important bit is the delay this is sort of what puts the time between each step so if we add a delay in here and then for the completed of the delay hook this up to our branch Leave it to 0.2 for the delay for now, just for testing purposes, and hopefully, if I compile this, press play, press 1, give it a second, you can see it's starting to fill up there, which is quite nice, and you can see those tiny little increments just going up. Now, if you guys want to work out exactly how much time it's going to take for this cooldown, it's really simple to do, so I'm going to try and explain it for you. So, because it's taking 0.05, um, you know, each time it's adding on to it, it's going to take 20 uh, increments. Basically what you want to do, if you want like a 20, uh, 2 second cooldown, what you'll want to do is maybe set a delay of like 0 0.1, so 20 times 0 0.1 is 2 seconds and so on. Just play around with the, va the variables to get the value that you want to, it's really as simple as that. Um, if you want it to be quicker, just turn down the delay. So if we compile this, press play with 0 0.1 in it instead, you're going to see it's going up a lot quicker here, which is quite nice. 
Now, that is pretty much everything for a basic cooldown system. You have pretty much just got to recreate that system for every one of your abilities that you have. It's not going to be hard, it only takes a couple of seconds, and it's just going to be the same code. The only difference is going to be that you have different variables for each and every one of your abilities. Now, bear in mind, you don't actually have to have a cooldown for each one of those abilities. It's entirely up to you. But for me, something like healing, you know, that is something that I'm going to want to do, but that's all good. One other thing that's sort of bugging me a little bit is that my little icon is over to the left in the action bar a little bit. It's a really simple and really easy fix. It's simply that I haven't actually anchored this to the bottom middle like I have done with the action bar. So simply just anchor that to the bottom middle, hit compile, hit save, make sure we save all of this, and you can see it's now gone in there just like a normal icon would and that's all good. But yeah, that's pretty much everything for a basic cooldown system, guys. I hope you have enjoyed the video just as much as I have. And once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.